Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, everybody. Now, this place is perhaps one of my favourite ones that I know in the district. I haven't been to all 84 parishes in this place. Of course I haven't. That may change over time. But of the ones I know, this is certainly one of the best. This is a lovely place with plenty of those kind of signs. Some old buildings that look just like this old pub here. Lots of old red brick structures. It's lovely. I can't say enough good things about Elston. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Perhaps my favourite village in the entire district, welcome to the beautiful Elston which lies to the southwest of Newark, a mile from the A46 Foss Way. It lies between the rivers Trent and Devon, set amongst trees and farmland. Elston currently has about 650 residents in some 280 households. A number of new homes have also been built within the last 20 years on once open spaces and there continues to be infill development on some of the large gardens. Elston was founded by the Angles in the 5th century. Its square shape is typically Anglo-Saxon. The name derives from a leader named Elva and it appears in the Doomsday Book as Elverston. Historic old buildings are plentiful and they include in their number Elston Hall, whose premier resident was Erasmus Darwin, the grandfather of Charles Darwin and founder of the Lunar Society. On the outskirts of Elston is Eden Hall, which was formerly known as Elston Towers or as Middleton House, and was the Victorian mansion of preacher Robert Middleton. Elston has a lot more to it than meets the eye. Even though I am familiar with it from years ago, there are still things that I didn't even know about, and there was one thing in particular which got us all talking. Keep watching to find out what that was. This is the land of the Black Giant. Let's take in Elston, folks. Come round me. Let's start at the mill. This was built in 1845 and locally it's known as the Black Giant. When it was being built there was an accident when raising its sails. They fell onto a teenage boy. It's now said to be haunted by his ghost. The sails were removed during wartime because they were seen as an unwanted marker for German bombers attacking nearby RAF Syaston. There were once three public houses in the village. The King William IV closed in 1915 and it's now a private residence called the Old Ale House. It's this white building seen here. The Checkers on Toad Lane, which is pretty much opposite that, is the only one of the three still in business. The third pub, the Horse and Gears, closed in 1936. The Checkers was the only pub classed as an inn and as such it held a full licence. The King William IV and the Horse and Gears were simply beer houses. Reputedly, there was a third beer house called the Blue Bell on Mill Road. Now, Hannah won't thank me for this, but you are a bit of a bus nerd, aren't you, Hannah? What did you find out about the buses here? 
Oh, she's we're, hiding. Oh, we're hiding. Okay, go on then. What do we find out about the buses, Nikki? No Sundays or bank holidays. <laughs> you can numbers, get to work. <laughs> yeah, numbers ninety-one and three five four. But looks of it. Just up from that bus stop is a wooden one which had a few adverts in it. The one I'm focused in on is for local crafters and asks for crocheted poppies. We found some of them later in the church. We also found the book exchange which is on the corner of Cargate Lane, Low Street and Toad Lane. Again it's another one which was very well stocked. Hannah was very interested in it for some reason. On the opposite corner is a bench. It's hard to read its inscriptions as it's a bit weather-worn, but it's a World War I commemoration bench. There were plenty of parish notice boards in this place, and Hannah went a little crazy with the TVI cards. Mind you, I suppose it all helps. Mark off Elston, everyone. Our next landmark can be found at the end of this road, which is off Low Street, and you don't need to be a genius to work out what it might be when you consider the road's name. Now to the untrained eye, this looks like it's a dead end, and to be fair, when you drive down here, you won't be able to go much further than a few more yards this way in a car but you can walk a bit further as well and if you do so you'll enter a field in the middle of that field there's an old chapel standing all on its own let's go and have a look at it this is a grade one listed building which was once a parish church it was declared redundant in 1976 it's thought it might have been the chapel of a medieval leper hospital dedicated to saint leonard Described as a solitary barn-like chapel, the building dates from the 12th century and additions and alterations were made to it in the 14th and 16th centuries. It has a fine Norman south doorway with zigzag decorations. The date, 1577, is inscribed over one of its windows and at the apex of the gable is the fragment of a cross. It was open so we had a look inside. There's a gallery which you can climb up onto. That's a rare find. Galleries were a common feature of Georgian churches, but the Victorians often removed them. Seeing as it's protected by the Church's Conservation Trust, we left a small donation in this letterbox, doing our bit for it. Buildings like this, after all, definitely do need to be preserved. Well, I've got to be honest, I didn't expect this chapel to be open. And even better than that, we can go up onto this balcony so we can get a, a view. Wow, this is, oh, it's steep and it's difficult to climb with a camera in my hand. There is a, a rope. Are these, are they bells? I'm not sure it's Whatever they are, they're holding me up. <laughs> these are seating up here and some really old original beams. But look at that. Isn't this amazing? Can you see that on the wall there? There's like a something in uh, there. Hold on. There. There's like a shape, sort of. As if something was once as there. As if like there was a lamp there or something. This is beautiful. You don't see things don't like see this, this every, every day. day. Let's see if these actually are bells. Hannah, just pull one. No, Let's don't. No, 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 no. It's still early in the morning. We'll back after the village up. I'll do it then. No. No. It says RB there and RF up there, and then there's IS there and then A there, TP. Whether those are more recent though, I don't know. But well, I would imagine this this is probably a lot yeah. older than those dates. Very pretty though. Back into the village, we're on Low Street, where all the oldest properties in the village are. Shown here is Water Pump Cottage, suggesting this is close to where the village pump once was. Elston doesn't have a post office now, but it used to have one along here, which was also a grocer's. However, there is a standalone red post box. The nearest post office now can be found in Farndon. Next we have the Old Forge. I found a brilliant picture of the forge from the 1920s whilst I was researching this. The blacksmith at that time was Frederick Mann. Stick around for the picture bit at the end because I've included it. Here's the Methodist Chapel. This was built in 1871 but its date stone shows 1815. That's because it comes from the original Wesleyan Chapel built in 1815 which was demolished in the 1960s. The chapel is still active too. On to Pinfold Lane, we pass a large field with some football pitches on it. That's Elston Community Sports Field, which is some four and a half acres big. Okay, now we're on the spinny 
this will take us towards a little park and also a shop and also the school and also the church they're all down here via a footpath and it's not a bad little street either Education and Elston School is All Saints Church of England and Methodist School and this was built on a field behind the church in 1974, replacing a smaller building close by. We'll see that in a moment, but first here's the playground, which for a village of Elston's size is absolutely fantastic. This has got an adventure trail too, and long-time viewers know what that means. So our, our Hannah is 20 years old and is currently on the swings that are behind the camera. I have been politely requested not to capture her on the swings, but I will embarrass her. Anyway, speaking of embarrassing people, I'm about to embarrass myself. Seeing as I've got two people with me today, I can attempt this adventure trail without holding the camera. So if I start there, Nikki, would you be so kind as to try and film me yeah. attempting this adventure trail? Let me just get in the shade. This right. Here we go. Okay, and here we go. Bar thingies. Oh, he's not very good at them, is he? Balancing block jobbies. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, boss that. Okay, across the uh, rope, uh, well, chain and uh, and block bridge thingy me. Well, he's, he's a bit wobbly, but we'll let him off with that. Okay, so another chain, chain, fence, thingy, jobby, oh dear. Yep, no. no, no, we're not doing very well on that. We'll hey, skip that one. Oh, no, oh, okay, well, we'll finish it up there then. No, 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 well, that's, that's what I do. As soon as I fall off, that's when I stop. Well, you didn't fall off, you stepped off. I was about to fall off, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was a bad effort. I was then roundly embarrassed again when Hannah showed me how it was done, getting from one end to the other without falling off. 20 years old this girl folks, and definitely still got it. The play area and an adjoining Bulls pitch and Elston Village Hall are all classed as being on the Village Green. The Village Hall can cater for 100 people and it has a licensed bar. Our next job was to try out the local shop, which is right next door. This is volunteer run and it was opened in 2005. Like most villages of its size, Elston used to have many more. One such example is Oakwood Cottage next to the Checkers on Toad Lane, which was a shop until the end of World War II. The current shop is basic, but it has local produce and it's staffed by some lovely locals. There's our next landmark, the main Anglican church. The Doomsday Book doesn't mention a church in Elston. It's dedicated to All Saints and it dates from the 13th century. So, TVI pounds, so we have some mango and apple chutney, which is something different. And another lovely half dozen of fresh eggs. Oh, and there. Uh, some, some sweeties for me because you know big sweet tooth you know you know me by now <laughs> right our next target is to go for the church which is just there heavily associated with the darwin family all saints was restored in 1837 and in 1856 the chancel was restored again and the vestry was rebuilt like the chapel this was open too Here's a small war memorial listing the dead or missing from World War I. Underneath that is a secondary tablet for those from World War II, and underneath that is the font. Visitors often come to see the mural monuments to the Darwin family here. Several are by Wallace of Newark, and there are three by Tylee of Bristol, for three Darwin children who died in the 1830s. Two Darwins, both with the first name John, have been reverenced here. Erasmus Darwin, the founder of the Lunar Society who lived at Elston Hall, has a bust on a marble support to the left of the altar. There's lots to see in this one, and Nikki found these quite interesting. In addition to the war memorial we've already seen, these are all to do with the war as well. Here's Nikki to explain what they are. And give some information about that are local people who passed away during one of the wars, or men are doing the first world war and it talks about where they are and the commemoration where they're commemorated on a memorial as well it's like this one Faubourg Damien cemetery 
and there's the memorial where they're honoured as well. That's quite interesting. It's an, it's another way of remembering local people who um, were lost in the war. Just before we leave, there's a wooden tablet on the wall, one of the Darwin memorials. This one mentions Gilbert William Lloyd and Elizabeth Joan Coke. Right next to the church, there's an old school which was built in 1856 and served as the village's primary school. Elston Hall was also a Roman Catholic school between 1955 and 1976. So to finish with, we're at the orchard where I can give you a little preview of what we'll see when we actually hit Newark itself. And that is via this road sign. This design of sign, you see this in the old part of Newark a lot. You don't tend to see it much out in the countryside. So it's good to see one here in Elston. It's time for today's picture bit now. And I don't really know what I'm gonna show you in this one, because apart from the village, I don't think there's much in this one, but we'll see what the internet will throw up. It might throw up if some things that I don't know about. So uh, yeah, yeah, that comes now. I'm just going to cut in here to point you in the direction of the link for Willow Rundle Spring. It's one of Nottinghamshire's ancient springs which it's said has never ever run dry. There's a number of legends associated with it, all of which are talked about in the link below. It's well worth a read. Just before we wrap this one up, I can show you Eden Hall. As I said in the intro, this was originally called Elston Towers or Middleton House, and the Victorian preacher Robert Middleton lived here. It was built by the man himself in 1872. Middleton only lived until 1885, and he died here in Elston. The house has had many uses since, including a chicken farm and an office block, but it's now a day spa. I think I've successfully converted both Nikki and Hannah into thinking that Elston is a lovely place to live. Am I right? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not much persuasion needed for me. I mean, it's got everything I want. <laughs> Peace, quiet, nice church, lovely houses. You know, uh, there's a pub. What more could you ask for? What more could you ask for? Exactly. Well, you're going to get a bit of a shock in the next place because it doesn't have any of them things. <laughs> Apart from a church, it does have a church. It could have a nice walk around and a lovely village feel, I would imagine. So, yeah. what's not to like about it? And I've not even been there yet. I suppose. <laughs> Let's see what it's like. Time for me to move on. This has been the Parish of Elston, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. And I'm out.